more than 500 years of experience, is about to retire from the Minnesota legislature at the end of this year, taking with them a significant amount of institutional knowledge and negotiating prowess. Among the soon-to-be retirees is one who has played a pivotal role in combating drug abuse, reforming pensions, and keeping the Vikings here in Minnesota. Senator Julie Rosen. Thank, thank you, you for Shannon. Joining me. Thank you very much. So let's start with uh, football season yeah. because it's just around the corner. You were chief author of the bill that got the U.S. Bank Stadium built. What's your perspective on this accomplishment? Well, it was a no-brainer at the time. And it actually, it was the House, uh, Representative Maury Lanning and Governor Dayton. And the three of us did not move without the other two being okay with what we did. It was uh, an amazing piece of legislation, a lot of work because there was some people that didn't believe the Vikings would be looking at another territory, which they, as, as history shows, uh, LA was open and they could have moved and they were looking at moving. So they are the fabric of Minnesota, one of the fabrics of Minnesota. And we put together a very good deal that was great for Minneapolis, for the city and for the Vikings. And now we have a state of the art incredible stadium that's very beneficial to all of us, especially the state. And uh, we should be very proud of that piece of uh, property. Yeah. Uh, you also led the charge to get some major reforms in the pension system implemented back in 2018. The state was paying out more than it was taking in, and with the aging baby boomers, um, the tsunami, the silver tsunami coming, it was only going to get worse. And you have cited pension reform as one of your top accomplishments. Why was this so important to you? Well, don't tell anybody, but I l really love pensions. <laughs> it's kind of a wonky thing, but so critical to the state to have a solid, uh, viable, healthy pension plan going forward. And we need to protect our state workers. They work very hard, whether it's uh, um, our teachers, our firefighters, our police officers, our state workers. Everybody works very hard, so we had to stabilize those funds. And that was a joint effort. It was shared sacrifice, all those great terms, but that bill was extremely important. It couldn't have come at a better time. We were kind of on our last leg there. And uh, we, we showed the rest of this, the, the nation that it can be done, pension reform, with, with uh, everybody coming to the table and working on it, and we did. Early in your Senate career, you led the Minnesota Methamphetamine Task Force, which resulted in passage of major anti-meth legislation in 2005. Considering the breadth of the legislation that you have shepherded over these 20 years now in the Senate, was it that early experience in tackling meth that gave you the tools and the understanding that you needed to become such a successful lawmaker? Oh, well, thank you. Um, absolutely, meth had landed in my, my district, Southern Minnesota. They had made a significant child endangerment law change in Iowa, so all the meth cooks were coming into Southern Minnesota. I had not a clue how to handle it, but got together about 35 people twice a month over nine months to develop the largest methamphetamine bill in the nation, and we passed it all at once. And that's what's significant, because most states peel off one issue at a time. It had not only put the pseudofedrin behind the counter to stop the meth cooks, it worked on child endangerment, it worked on remediation of contaminated property, it worked on uh, disclosure of contaminated property, it worked on uh, treatment and making some safe harbor homes, some for meth homes for mothers with, with children, addicted uh, mothers. It was an incredible piece of legislation. Could not have passed that without the help of all of the players, the retailers, the judges, police officers, the you know, nonpartisan staff, our staff, it just went on and on, but also um, my colleagues from across the aisle. And Senator Berglund calls me up one Saturday morning and we're chit-chatting and she says, well, how's the meth bill coming? And I said, good. And she goes, well, I'd like to help you with it. And I said, you're not going to take that bill from me, are you? <laughs> and she goes, no, you need help passing this. You can't get this passed without my help. And I realized at that time, you need to ask and you need to reach across the aisle, whether you're in the majority or the minority. That was a significant lesson right there. On another drug front, you were instrumental in the establishment in 2019 of licensing fees on opioid distributors and manufacturers to begin raising additional funding to tackle the societal ramifications of opioid 
opioid abuse. And those funds um, have been and are still being used mm -hmm. to fund treatment and county services. Is Minnesota now on the right track in tackling opioid abuse? We are on a very, very solid path going forward, and we've uh, laid a very good foundation with that bill. Um, I have the, a very soft spot in my heart for children that are in abusive situations because of drug addiction. And I think that's because of the methamphetamine bill. So took the opioid um, issues head on with a lot of colleagues on both sides of the aisle to, to address that. And we did an outstanding bill uh, with the help of um, you know, you know, the executive branch. I mean, it was an incredible piece of legislation. Have uh, great faith that we are tackling that issue and we have the resources that are available and more resources coming and we have um, a system to make sure that we can get the relief out. Now, in a couple answers here, you've spoken of working across the aisle and group efforts to get big legislation done. Is that potentially a message to future people who will be coming to the legislature? Absolutely. Do not feel too comfortable in your seat, whether you're in the minority or majority. And you cannot get anything substantial done here at this Capitol without knowing your colleagues and working across the aisle. And if I can give one piece of advice, go to people's offices and sit down and talk to them in, at, in their environment, in their situation. When you have a bill and you need signatures, go personally to them and ask for them to sign on to the bill. Make sure you explain the bill, why you're passionate about this, why you're doing it, and you develop a relationship. It's been very difficult the last couple of years with our uh, the COVID pandemic and this lack of communication and looking at each other in the eyes. But those personal one-on-one -on -one skills are so critical to getting anything done here. And relatedly, in a 2012 article in the Mankato Free Press, author Mark Fishnick pointed out that you are, quote, virtually never in the middle of the partisan warfare that draws TV time and other media coverage. Has that been intentional on your part? And would the state benefit from more lawmakers focusing on the work and not on the politics? I think that he's probably giving me more credit than is due, but yeah, I think it was intentional that it's, I don't, I don't wanna waste my time with a partisan par politics. Um, the majority of my term has been raising children and I left children at home uh, for six months out of the year. So I had to t stay very focused on what my priorities were for the district here at the Capitol and what was best for the entire state. I, and I wish more, um, more legislators understood that. We've had this uh, wave of, of um, people that have come in and really have taken it to extremes on either side. So, you know, you have to, you have to work with people and um, you have to compromise. And that's been my goal. I'm not gonna waste my time, uh, my family's time uh, by being a partisan. Have you accomplished what you set out to do in 2002 when you first came here? Absolutely, absolutely, Shannon. Uh, I can walk away and say oh, we did good, um, and I can tell my family that you, your sacrifice was worth it because a lot of good legislation happened uh, on my watch and the watch of other people too, but thank you very much. And I can go back to my constituents and say, you believed in me and I appreciate that so very much. They are the best people in the world and uh, hopefully I, I served you well. In fact, I know I served you well. Senator Julie Rosen, I wanna thank you for your service and mm -hmm. I wanna thank you for your time today. Thank you, thank you very much, Shannon. It's been great working with you.